Okay, welcome back here again. My name is Robert Farrell. Thank you very, very much for being here. Now, if you're watching this on Udemy, on the top right-hand corner, you'll be able to write notes to yourself. In fact, I have a free series of tutorials that will help you to uh, basically be better with the Udemy process. If you simply go to udemy.com forward slash think, learn, earn, I have a whole series of videos that will help you how to use things on Udemy, also some great courses on other topics that I teach. Okay, now here's how Dreamweaver thinks. Dreamweaver simply does this. It creates the HTML pages for you using simple point and click techniques, which I will share with you. The first thing that you need to do before you basically build your web pages or basically your website is to tell Dreamweaver where you are going to keep your files. Now, what do I mean by files? I mean JPEG files, your images. Image files are broken down into different file extensions. As an example, I can have a photograph. A photograph is broken down to a .jpeg file. If I have a graphic, perhaps that's a .gif file, .gif file. So all your files have to be part of a folder. So it's very similar to if you were going to basically forget computers for a second, if you were going to basically put together a flyer, well, you would have to have your paper, your pen, your ink, et cetera, et cetera. So you probably want to have that easy to get to place. So what Dreamweaver needs to know from, from you first is to set up and define where you want to keep your site on your computer. Okay, now in subsequent videos, I will share with you, of course, how to take it from your computer to publish it to their computer, which is basically a hosting company like GoDaddy or HostGator, wherever you're going to host your site. So here is how software works. All software has a theme to it. So these are my menu choices. Now, what I'm going to share with you is how this particular software works. So based on these choices, because all software comes down to is simple choices. So based on these choices, these are choices, how would I basically create a site? Well, some of you might guess file, but that's sort of not correct. Changing, modifying, eh, not really. So based on these choices, if I want to create a site, I simply go to my site menu. And then based on these choices, we're going to make ourselves a new site. Now, for those of you that are new to Dreamweaver, and more importantly, possibly new to computers in general, here's how to read the menus. Anytime you see a menu choice that has a dot, dot, dot after it, you're going to get a dialog box. A dialog box is basically how we communicate with the software, one step at a time. So we're going to click New Site and bring up this dialog box. Okay, now, very important. Okay. What you choose to call the site is totally up to you. But as an example, if you had a domain name, domain name is nothing more than your website address that's on the web. So let's say you had a domain name that was something like uh, mycat.com, mycat.com. That's your domain name. That's how people find your website by going to a web browser and typing in mycat.com. Now. I'm not doing an advertising because I assume that there's a website out there called mycat.com. I'm just using an example. So here's what you would do. This is just the site name locally. So we're not going to put in the .com. We're simply going to say mycat. Now, here's how this works if you want to take a note. Any file that goes on the internet should simply be good at habit to get into is lowercase no space because web addresses are case sensitive. So that's an example. If I was to go to mycat.com and add a file called mycat.html, if I spell with uppercase but somebody types lowercase, they're not going to find that page. So my rule of thumb is this. Any file that goes to the web, which means a folder, a JPEG file, a QuickType movie, any file, and everything on your computer basically is a file, right? Any file should be lowercase, no space. If you have to use spaces, for search engine purposes, use hyphens. That's a good app to get into. So I'm simply going to type in the word for the site name, my cat. Then, based on these choices, what is the name of this dialog box? Site setup. Well, I don't have a name for my site yet. I will in a second when I basically say my cat. So based on these choices, we're going to click right here. Now, we're going to go to our desktop. Now, tell me what this dialog box says. This dialog box says choose root folder. 
Now, for those of you that are new to this whole concept of web page and development, you're like, what the heck does that mean? Okay, the root folder is basically a fancy schmancy word for your home folder or your home page. Your, your root folder contains all the assets needed to create your website, which means any of your text files, your HTML files, your JPEG files, your GIF files, your QuickTime movie files, even your Flash files. So what we need to do, and this is my technique and my objective, is to share exactly the way I do things. I use these same exact techniques to build six-figure websites. Yes, I did say six-figure. I build about six, seven of those a year using these same exact techniques I am sharing with you. So what we're going to do based on these choices. Now, I happen to be on Macintosh. It's the same exact technique on Windows. So I'm going to basically click New Folder. Now, you might assume that I'm going to call this folder my cat. But I'm not going to do that. Now, I'm not here to trick you. I'm here to share with you proper production techniques. Because I assume if you're going to, if you're watching this video, in addition to building your own website or website for your company, I assume that you want to maybe do this for a living and build more websites. Well, with that in mind, we're going to create a folder called Websites. So pay close attention. So if you're new to file management, this could potentially hurt your head. So we're going to create a new folder. Then we're inside of this folder. Well, that's not our root folder. So we're going to create another folder inside of this folder. So it's kind of exactly, forget computers for a second. It's kind of like saying, I have a folder on my desktop. And I'm not talking about computers. I'm saying about, you have a, you have a desk at your house. And on your desktop, on your desktop at your house, not your computer, you have a folder called bills. Inside that folder called bills, you might have mortgages, credit cards. Inside a credit card folder, you might have another folder called Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Inside the American Express folder, you might have January, February, March, April. Inside the April folder, you might have a late notice. Little humor there. Okay, so this is simply a folder inside of a folder, but Dreamweaver needs to know where your root folder is going to be kept. So that's the folder, not the website folder. The website folder is not going to be our root folder. Our root folder is going to be my cat. The no.com, simply the name of the folder. So now Dreamweaver knows that that is going to be where we're going to put our stuff, our HTML pages, our... Uh, graphics, our JPEG files, etc., etc. Now, similar to any other website you've been on, of course, inside my home root directory folder, we could have many subfolders. We'll talk about that in subsequent videos, but I just want you to walk before you can run. So we're going to choose that. Now, again, very important step. Once this is done the first time, you don't have to continue to do this. This is per website address. So again, if you have a website called mycat.com, this is the steps we follow to basically define where we're keeping that folder on your computer. We're not talking about publishing to the server. We're not even there yet. You have to walk before you can run. So I'm going to take this step by step. Hold your hand every step of the way. I'm here to help you. So based on these choices, we're going to save that. So what Dreamweaver just went ahead and did, I'm going to close this window for a second, but what Dreamweaver just went ahead and did is to find that as my root folder. So that's step one to getting started with your Dreamweaver website. So step one is to go to site and make a new site. Now, a couple of things I want to share with you before we move on to the next video. Let's say that you made a typo, or let's say, you know, I don't want to put it on my desktop. Maybe I want to put it in another folder. I really suggest you keep it simple and put things on your desktop for easy access. But I can still change that. So let's say I went to my desktop and I basically changed the location of the folder, or I want to basically uh, made a typo. So based on these choices, I can go and manage sites. So these are some of the sites that I've managed before, but based on these choices, I'm just going to double click right there. And I can say maybe it was supposed to be my cats. Etc. Etc. Now, for this, I would have to go to my physical desktop and change the name from here. Dreamweaver is not going to do that for you. But I assume in this particular case, you follow my directions and you put in the proper name of your domain name or your website. Now, here's the deal 
if you're totally new to this, you probably don't even have a domain name. I will share with you in subsequent videos of this course how you can register a domain name. In fact, I can provide very inexpensive hosting for you. And I'm talking like cheap hosting, like cheap, cheap. And it's the same service that I use. I have my server, my hosting companies out in California. So in this video series, I will give you the opportunity of how you can make, make your own domain name and set up your own website totally from scratch on a hosting plan. So my name is Robert Farrell. Thank you for being here. Let's move forward in creating our first page in our next video.